this card went from completely unplayable to breaking an entire format. I think it's so broken that the format might need immediate attention from LSS by getting an emergency ban. My name's Fino, and in this video, we'll be discussing how Kraken's Aethervane made Verdance the most powerful hero in the Living Legend format overnight. Let's start by talking about what makes this all work. Kraken's Aethervane is a wizard staff. As an instant, once per turn, you can pay three to deal one arcane damage. Then you draw a card for each arcane damage dealt this way. The problem with this before was there was no practical ways to modify the damage of Krakens. So functionally, it was pitch a blue and ask your opponent if they would like to AB1 this, and if not, you get a free damage and replace the card you used to pitch for this. It was incredibly fair, to the point of it not being very good, especially when its competition was Waning Moon. So what changed? Well, remember how I said that there was no practical way to modify the damage? Well, that all changed with Rosetta. We gained a ton of cards with the keyword Amp, which increases the damage dealt the next time you would deal arcane damage. Amp completely unlocks this weapon's potential and unleashes a monster on the format. Now, let's explain how the combo works. Now, what's funny is the deck doesn't actually use its hero power at all. You typically don't even play decomposed cards. The reason this combo works in Verdance is because her Earth card pool, which gives her access to life gain and amp, as well as amp based on life gain. You've got the new gloves, Hold Focus. You've got Channel Millennium Tree, or as I like to call it, Channel Mount Broccoli. Exploding Aether. You've got the new discard to amp your next spell cards, like Arcane Twinning and Photon Splicing. You've got Will of the Arcana, the Fable, but what really makes this work is Life, Rampant Growth, the Split card. This works very similar to the combo in Classic Constructed with Rampant Growth, where you gain a bunch of life, you resolve the Rampant Growths, then use your weapon, and then your weapon gets a ton of added value from it hitting your opponent for a ton of arcane damage, letting that carry forward into more value. If you're curious how that works though, check out this video over here where Majin can explain how that combo works to you a bit better. Now keep in mind, you can't do this exact combo in Classic Constructed because Krakens was Icelander's signature weapon. So it left the format when she hit Living Legend status. The big difference between this and the one that you do in Classic is this requires way less setup to do. So you can do this as early as the first turn of the game if you hit a really good first hand. It's incredibly difficult to do it that early though, as you really need to open with specific cards like Rampant Growth. So what you'll do with the said Rampant Growths is you will play at least one of these. If you have your hat, you can use that to get back the one that you play, but ideally you're trying to play multiple of these, resolve a bunch of other life gain at the same time, and then your weapon's gonna get amped for a ton. I've seen it get amped for double digits. And then you're gonna hit your opponent for a bunch of damage, and you're gonna pick up like half your deck when this hits. So what are you doing now that you've got all of these cards in your hand? How are you actually winning the game? Well, first, you could just go even further with what you're already doing. Gain more life, play more amp, play some more rampant growths, and then just buff the shit out of your next arcane damage spell, and hopefully just two tap them between your staff and the next thing that you play. But more commonly is using fire breathing in combination with a new card called Thrive, which comes from the first strike Terra deck. Fire breathing will let you convert every resource in your hand into one point of damage. Then for every copy of Thrive that you play, we're gonna double that damage. This will easily let you OTK or one turn kill your opponent in one single big attack. And if you don't have what you need after drawing half of your deck, there's a ton of card filtering to dig through your deck to find what you need, like sifts and tomes, so you can really find what you need with that many cards in your hand. You're gonna hit the combo. Now, generally, I'm not really a big fan of banning cards, and even less so my fan of unscheduled emergency bans. But in the case of this, I think I have to make an exception. I think this is the most broken thing I have ever seen in Flesh and Blood. Before this set, I think Living Legend was actually the best way to play Flesh and Blood. The format was fun and exciting, and it was relatively balanced. After this, I think the format is just really close to unplayable. Sure, there's some counterplay that exists to this, but it's going to be a lot of, did you draw your silver bullet when they go to combo off? and. Did they draw the anti-silver bullet? Like if you play Poison the Well, which isn't even incredible into this combo, they could draw a negate countering your Poison the Well. 
So it's like silver bullet to the silver bullet. And then even if you do stop them on that one turn, they can just attempt to do it the game. The, the game doesn't actually end because you stuffed their combo once. As we saw on coverage, Logan was able to reassemble the combo after getting it stuffed. If we don't see a ban before Worlds, I think the team event is going to be worse off for this existing. But what do you think? Do you think this should be allowed to exist in the format, or am I just an old man yelling at the sky? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, there is a deck list in the description provided by Logan King, who got second place at the PTI event this weekend. And also, you know, we got to do the algorithm things. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps support the channel. All the support you guys have been giving have really been helping the channel blow up recently. So I genuinely appreciate all the support that you guys have been doing. And of course, check out the Patreon. It helps me create more content like this. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you.